Yesu aduhana umugisha. May the Lord bless us together. Turanezere kwa munzu y'Imana. We are delighted to be in the house of the Lord. Uyu numunsi wa numwanya wa Bible study. This is a time for Bible study. Eh igiye twiga ijambo ry'Imana. A time that we learn the word of God. Tumaze igihe kinini turi kuri topics cyangwa amasuje cyangwa tuvuga ngo bibiri yivuga iki kuri iki. Uh, we've had a long time that uh, learning what the Bible says about different aspects. Uyu munsi rero turi kuri bibiri ivuga iki kuri ministeri y'umugore. And today we are going to learn that uh, what does the Bible say about women in ministry. Murabizi natangiye ubushize you know that I started this last week. Ariko ntacyo navuze ho kinini. But I didn't go deep into it. Kuko nababwiye ngo ni byiza ko uwo muhamagara utavugwa n'umugore bivugwa n'umugabo. Because I told you that this is not good that a woman should teach this but our man should teach that. Ni byiza ko uwabivuga yaba ari umugabo nti bivugwe n'umugore. It is befitting that this should be talked about by a man. Niyo mpamvu rero nabateguje ku munsi tuzaba dufite umushitsi Eh, uri muri twebwe ugiye kutwigisha Bishop Andre mfite umukiza uh, that is why i prepared you last time that today we're going to have a visitor who is a man who is going to teach us Ile Bishop Andre eh, Bishop mfite umukiza Andre wari we let me tell you who Bishop Andre mfite umukiza is no mukozi w'Imana wo muri Association des Églises Baptistes mu Rwanda he's a, a servant of God in the Association of the Baptist Churches in Rwanda akaba ahagarariye eh, region ya majyaruguru yaba Baptiste and he's a representative of the northern part of the country of the Baptist churches eh rero tukaba tuziranye n'umuryango we kuva muri 2013 and he's been our family friend from 2013 tuziranye twe duhuriye mu muryango cyangwa mu gikorwa kitwa peace plan aho forum ziza matorero zose zihurira i know him from the peace plan forum igihe kimwe yabaye board member nange ndiwe at some point he was a, made, a board member together with me naho twamenyaniye that is how i got to know him naho naje kumenya rero ko nk'umu baptiste afite umutwaro that is also where I go to learn that as a Baptist he has a burden for the women in ministry and that uh, he wrote a book or a dissertation on uh, women in ministry uh, but in particular I got to know about him because he came home to interview me niho namenye ko ariho abaza ashaka kubaza abagore uh, that is how I got to learn that he wanted to know about women in ministry. And then he told me concerning that book that he was writing. That is how I got to know Bishop Andrew Fitumukiza. But also besides that I know him as a servant of God. He's together with his wife. His wife loves us. They, are not, they don't stay far away from here, they stay next to Alam Ministries. Uh, the wife usually comes to visit us. And we welcome you once again. Without further ado, you who are here, and we are here. I trust that when you hear such messages, you tell others out there because it's a big question that can women actually be in ministry. Tudatinze rero reka twakire umukozi w'Imana Bishop mfite umukiza Andre Without further ado let us welcome Bishop Andrew Eh azivza giye kuvuga He knows what he's going to talk about Malorezo madufite iminota mike tugira iminota 30 arabizi We have our time is quite limited and he knows that Ariko mu minota 30 arabatubwiye but in, that, um, but in that time, he'll have told us what he has upon his heart. Yes, May the Amen. Lord bless us together. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Nukuri mfite umunezero nibyishimo kuba naramenyanye n'umushumba wanyu Lilioze. Truly I am delighted and full of joy to have known your pastor Pastor Lilioze. Byose arabivuze. She has said it all. Deka uyu mwanya nubwo ngeragejwe ngeragejwe n'iminota let me try in this time i'm being uh, tested by this timing 
iminota 30 kugira ngo mvuge iki kibazo ntabwo byoroshye saying that i should talk about this issue in 30 minutes is not easy abivuze neza kuko nagize umutwaro w'ikibazo cy'abadamu uh, she introduced it well because I've had an issue with a burden of women. I grew up in a conservative church. And it wasn't just conservative in regard to the word of God, but in regard to the culture and the rituals of the of the of the culture that they grew up in. I eventually got disturbed by that culture. Uh, my wife and I, after completing the pastoral classes. Uh, me as a man, I was sent to teach in a Bible school. Now, my wife and I had also, my wife had also completed, but she couldn't speak before men. Uh, I don't know what happened, but one of the professors got a problem and they was fired. There was a gap to find someone that could replace the professor that had been fired. And then they, they, they looked around and they found that this lady, even though she has completed, can we allow her to teach men? They didn't have an option but to allow her to teach. And she taught so well more than men could do. And she was even better than me. It, that was a testimony that I would receive from the students. Now, see where the conflict came in that uh, in the conservative party, the, in the conservative culture, that they couldn't pay her the same amount as a man, so they gave her half the, the, the salary. Uh, she was in, in that during that time they were being paid eight thousand and she was paid four thousand. These are the battles that the evangelical churches continue to face as they try to put down the woman. Uh, let me go into the real problem. Is it possible, is it befitting that a woman can do a pastoral job? Like I had already mentioned, this is a problem that the evangelical churches don't perceive the same way. You find that there is pulling of strings and they are trying to put down the calling of women that have been called of the Lord. Uh, the, the other problem that is there is that they want culture to, to, to be submissive to, to all throughout the times. Instead of having culture submit to the word of God, they want the word of God to submit to the culture. This is the problem that we have that we continue to face day by day. Let us see the position of the woman in the Old Testament. The mighty men that we hear of that were used by the Lord, they were, they were not born by women. They were born by women and they were raised by women. And then you wonder, how is this possible? Women like men were also called by the Lord and they were given a responsibility to bring to pass the purposes of God. In those men, we talk about men like Moses. 
it, she, he wouldn't be talked about if a woman called Yokebe wouldn't have given birth to him. We get that in Exodus chapter 6 verse 20. The first woman that we see in the Bible is a woman called Miriam. Um, Jacob did not give birth to only Miriam, uh, to only Moses and Aaron, but also Miriam. No, no, Jacob should Miriam. We believe to grow you, Koya, Kuri, Mutwe, Wabahimba, Zanabaramia. Uh, but in particular, the Bible emphasizes that uh, Miriam was the head of the praise and worship team. And she was a prophetess in Israel. The Bible continues to emphasize Miriam in Micah chapter 6, verse 4. Yeah. Ngo, nakuza na that for I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Nda kurokora, and I and I brought you out of the house of God. And I sent before you Moses and and Miriam. But you see that Miriam, a woman, was also together with Aaron and Moses in leading the uh, the people of Israel. Miriam as a prophetess therefore and we must accept that he she would talk to the Lord and she would speak to the people concerning what the Lord had said the prophecy of Miriam wasn't just concerning women. Uh, the prophecies that could come from Miriam concerned the men and women in Israel alike. The second woman in the Bible, uh, the, your pastor mentioned about her, it's a woman called Deborah. She had a very prominent position in the leadership of Israel. She was a judge. And she had a, a position of leadership in Israel. Uh, the man that was in charge had a problem. When Deborah told him that uh, what was supposed to be done, uh, and then uh, the man said that if we don't go together, we, I can't go. What followed, you know. God had given her a gift of leadership and the gift of prophecy and that concerned all Israelites it wasn't to be meant between men and women uh, the, the book of Judges chapter 4 verse 5 says that all the Israelites would come to her for judgment and the third woman that was uh, in leadership was a lady called Hilda and she was led by the Lord to, to bring forth the messages of the Lord. Why, why is it that in these days people want to believe that only men have a say in the church? I, I want to thank you because you don't have an issue with having a pastor that is a, a woman. And I have experience. I've been a leader for a long time and I'm still a leader. In our churches, it was forbidden for a woman to be a leader. Uh, the church was um, a fundamental unit from 1962. 
But what was surprising is that they were usually in conflict over the issue of a woman in leadership. But you know the issue was that the women were actually um, leading in, in back doors, not openly. Uh, you'd find that such churches where the women were in leadership of sorts, they would, you'd find that they were more organized than the uh, churches where men were the only leaders. But after saying that issue is where I got the burden to write a doctoral a thesis on, on women in leadership. And from that time up to the uh, 20th of October 20, 2019, last year, is when women were officially allowed to get into leadership. But now see the conflicts from 1967 up to 2019 having those issues in the church. But why those barriers and resistances in regarding to a woman leading a church? Yet Jesus removed all those barriers. And let us see the woman with a blood issue for 12 years. Uh, in, in, in Israel, it was an abomination for a woman that was in her periods to come next to other people that a crowd of other people. Uh, for 12 years she was put aside because she was in her periods. She didn't have an option. Because the terms and conditions required her to do so. But after hearing that Jesus had come, come, though it was forbidden, she wasn't allowed to touch anyone. She wasn't allowed to meet anyone. But we all know that she found her way and she got into the crowd and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. The terms and conditions of the Israelites from Moses, what that woman had done was an abomination. She was supposed to be stoned. Uh, it, but instead, Jesus said that your faith has healed you. And from that barrier of not of her not being allowed to get to others where others are or even touching Jesus but Jesus gave her mercy and she was allowed and she was given a good time of healing uh, the second woman in the Bible in the New Testament is a woman in adultery but you know, uh, instead of getting both of them that were committing adultery, they only brought the woman. I don't want to go back to that of how it happened. Uh, but you know, time came and those that were accusing her became the accused instead. Yes, Jesus looked at her keenly. Uh, given that she was also supposed to be stoned. But Jesus healed her instead. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus did not want to support the culture of, of elevating or esteeming some and then putting others down. And we see that Jesus received her and the barriers that were supposed to separate her from others were removed. You know the story of the Samaritan woman. 
Samaria 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 cyari gihugu kizira ku Bayuda. Samaria was a country that was abominable to the Israelites. Aba Samaria bemeraga ibitabo bitano gusa bya Mose. Ah the Samaritans who only believed in the five books of the of Moses. Bakizera imana imwe. They believed in one God. Kandi bakizera umuhanuzi umwe Mose. And they believed only one prophet, Moses. They believed only the Ten Commandments from Moses. And only that one mountain was, is where prayers were supposed to be made. They always waited for Moses to come. To the of Moses. In the community of the Jews, At the Samaritans were, were people that had been uh, cut off. They were treated as pagans, uh, an unholy nation, and actually uh, an unholy nation from their birth. The, the, the miracle, they saw that Jesus, they found Jesus with a Samaritan woman, something that was forbidden Amen. in Israel. Amen. Uh, Jesus went over all those barriers so that he can teach them. Uh, the, the disciples were also surprised. They found Jesus sitting with a Samaritan woman. And they were surprised that these are people that do not approve of us. How come Jesus is sitting with her? The, after the Samaritan woman had been convinced, she went forth to speak of what Jesus had done. And from this, they say that the Samaritan woman became the first missionary for Jesus. Beloved children of God, why do we want to create women, uh, problems for women? Uh, when you read in the book of Acts, you find the four girls that were also prophets. You know, uh, I'm going just over this. I don't have time to go into depth, but let's get into the root of the problem. Uh, First uh, Corinthians chapter 14 verse 34 niro kuko batemererwa kuvuga ahubwo baganduke nkuko amateko nayavuga kandi nibagira icyo bashaka kumenya babira barize abagabo babo imuhira kuko biteye isoni ko mugore avugira mu iteraniro let your women keep silent in the churches for they are not permitted to speak, but if they are to be submissive, as the law also says. And if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is shameful for women to speak in church. Or did the word of God come originally from you, or was it from only that it reached? So see the, where the root of the problem is. This is what the conservatives use and say that women are not supposed to do a pastoral work. Unasomye ufite umutima wo kumva no gusesengura wasanga uyu murongo utari kuvuga ngo umugore yekuvuga ubutumwa uh, and actually, if you read this uh, particular scripture passage uh, carefully, you'd find that it actually doesn't forbid women from doing evangelical work. Uh, it's the same verse that is in Second Corinthians chapter 22, verse 5. Ariko nje na nitegereje ku badam ku imurongo nshaka kuvuga nabonye niba nari ko mwumva namwe simbizi umurongo wa umurongo wa gatano hatubwira ngo umugore cyangwa umu umukobwa ntakambarane numugabo the verse says that a woman should not wear a man's clothes kandi numugabo ntakambarane numugore and a, a man should not wear a woman's clothes uh, 
such a scripture is what you find that is creating problems in the church. Narimvuze ndi kwa no kwa damu na barebye na bakobwa. Ah, ndamubonye umwe wa mbayipataro. Uh, you know, I hadn't seen any woman here that is wearing a trouser. Uyu murongo ri usanga abatororo menshi yubaka ihongo kirazira ku mugore yambara ipataro ngo kirazira ku mugobwa yambara ipataro. Mu byukuri muri uyu murongo ubu guteka kwa kabiri harimo ipataro. You see, this is the scripture that you find most people urging that men, women should not wear trousers. But if you read that scripture, does it mention anywhere trousers? At the time Moses was writing this, this scripture, this verse, there were even no um, trousers at that time. Uh, you know, I've gone a little too far because I wanted to, uh, to compare it to the, uh, to the understanding of this scripture. Why is the problem? Usomye urwamirwa ya Korinto bice 12 ukabisoma neza urasanga Paulo ari kubwira abagore ko bagomba gusenga no guhanura batwikiriye umutwe. when you read this scripture in uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 you'll find that Paul is telling women to actually pray and prophesy while covering their heads. Ageze hepfo no navuga ngo abagore mucecekere mu iteraniro and then when he comes down in that passage, he says that women should be silent in churches. I want to tell you that the Bible doesn't contradict itself. Even Paul is not contradicting himself. It is a problem of perception. Uh, I want to tell you that a church in Corinth was a church that was... Uh, was a lot of work for Paul. Paul sweated a lot concerning the perception of the people in Corinth. If there was any divisions, it was in Corinth. If there was any adultery to the extent of incest, it was in Corinth. Uh, those that didn't want to submit and even doubted Paul and his calling, it was in Corinth. Uh, let me get into the problem itself. What is the problem? Paul who is saying that women can pray and prophesy can't again come and say that women should be silent. I want to tell you that every script, every book that is written in the Bible, it, it followed a particular um, condition that was happening at that time. The way the church in Corinth was and the women in those churches is not the same way the Rwandan women were or are today. The problem was with the women that had accepted the gospel and had turned to the, uh, from paganism. The, in the pagan uh, faith where they were, they would pray a, a god that was called Dionysos. 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 <laughs> yes. Uh, the second uh, god was that one. Those two gods. Uh, what the Bible says is that those, the, uh, what the women had had uh, something that would please those gods. It's not what the Bible says. It is history. When you read history, it is explained. What would please those gods was the noise of women. Uh, whenever they would shout, that would be pleasing to those gods. I don't know 
Yeah, they would shout. Oh, uh, Vada. Mm. Uh, th that way of shouting is what would please those two gods. those two gods. No, no. I'm not going to give you what I'm going to give you. I'm not going to give you what when after these women had converted and come to Christianity, they wanted to bring that kind of, of practice into the church. And whenever they would get to church, that they shout. And there was a lot of confusion and commotion. And they would think that the way they would please their false gods is how they are going to please the Almighty God. And when Paul saw that, he said this is, um, that it's unheard of. And because of the freedom they had before they had gotten into Christianity, they wanted, after they had become Christians, they wanted to go overboard and even have uh, practice that same freedom. And whenever a prophecy would come in, those women would be the first to ask questions and create confusion. No, 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 Paul, I didn't and then Paul told them that okay if it is that way then you should be silent in church be silent in church and that if you have something to say go home and ask your husband truth of the matter truth be told that this scripture does not hinder or stop women from serving the Lord as I come to the end, I've gotten into the summary a lot. The, the, the calling that came for a, man, for a man is the same calling that came for a woman. Why do we want to silence women? The source of the calling of a man is the source of the calling of a woman. No, ni murebi kibazo dufite kubere kitushaka but see the problem that we have why do we want to stop the women that God called from talking and if you're to be careful you would find that women have better leadership <laughs> if you think I'm lying look at your pastor Hallelujah. And we talk a lot. I want, to, I want to thank those that the men that have stood with her. Please, uh, you may clap for her. Mubjukuri, nirukanganya ni minota. Niwa haba humanya wivazo simbizi. Ibi tisiga ye changwa se niwa naza garuka. Muri makena ako karuna. Nibu na shaka kuvu. I've been running after time. I don't know if questions are permitted or if I'll have to come back. But that is what I wanted to say in short. Amen. Yes, Ashimne. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Iminota yariji yari konje kuba sabichi no. Uh, our time is fast spent, but I'm going to request for something. Nabgo umuhama garo mugore tu wiga kujirango to defend gusabagori. we do not learn about women in ministry so that we may define we may defend women. Ndaja umbabgire ngo wenda mwe ni mubizi. but I want to tell you that maybe you don't know. Ako kuri ba mwe ni But to some it is a problem. Kuri ba mwe ni It is a big issue. Even without saying it, but to them it is a problem. It is therefore befitting as children of God who are striving to become disciples of Jesus that you learn the truth that helps you as an individual but you also help others that are that way. Uh, the servant of God will come back we shall give him time one day when it is Wednesday. When all HBFs have come here. And that time we shall ask questions. Yes, Praise the Lord indeed. The other thing that I want to tell you about. Allow me to say it to you. You all know that I've been a pastor to Omega Church for about 18 years. Ariko hashizimia kama kumia vidi 
But it's been 25 years since I was as uh, as ordained to become a pastor. And I want to say that in that church where they ordained me as a pastor, the meetings would be called even without my knowledge. Because they do not approve of a pastoral job for a, a, a woman. Uh, I want to tell you that this is a problem to the extent that to the time when they were going to ordain me, they were confused, but they found it befitting. Uh, they called five other men so that it doesn't look like they've prayed for one woman uh, who is even not uh, from the country where she was, who was Rwandan uh, at that time that she was made a pastor. But I got to learn of that after I become a pastor. This is how much people can go to defend their rituals and their culture. But I also want to tell you that for the time that I've been a pastor in Omega, I have Christians that I, whose names I won't tell you that we walk together with, you teach them, they get to know the Lord, a light shines upon them, and after they tell you, they tell you, I love you so much. That, but I don't approve of the structure of Omega. Because they are being led by a woman. And then you were wondering, where did the light that shone upon you, where did it come from? And this caused me to think that people need to understand. Let us walk in the truth of the word of the Lord. Uh, there are so many cultural uh, activities that happen that, uh, that are just beyond women in ministry that uh, go beyond. We should refuse that in the name of Jesus. A round of applause to the Lord for the servant of the Lord. Uh, I, I bless the Lord that in particular I've gotten to learn of the testimony of the wife. It has helped me in a way. Yes, May the Lord bless you. But I also want to uh, thank uh, Pastor Bishop. It's not often that you'll find men that support their wives to that extent. I'm telling men who are seated here. <laughs> Uh, men that are sitting here, I'm telling you. There are times when it's, it won't be allowed, it won't happen. That is why I also thank my husband. It is not easy when you're a man to allow your wife to stand in You may think it is easy, but you will see it when it comes to you. When it comes to you, you'll know that it is not easy to allow your woman to come and stand here while you sit. It, it requires selflessness. It requires you to lay down your manship. It, it requires circumcision of the heart. Uh, men, I pray for you too. Uh, besides uh, pastoral work, but may the Lord help you that what the Lord gave to your wives, the potential that the Lord placed in your wives, that you might also be humble enough to support them.